assessment is accessible to them in Tavera. The assessment will then be forwarded to the site supervisor and the field instructor once the student has completed their portion. When the student begins the midterm assessment, they will see that basically all they need to do is complete the assessment because the goals that you created in your field learning plan will carry over directly to your midterm assessment. Here's an example. This is directly taken from a student's field learning plan. The goal of I will prepare an agenda for weekly supervision that will include plans for educational supervision was from competency one with the verification discussed in supervision. For each goal that you identified in your field learning plan, you will now see that goal within your midterm assessment. It's a multi-step process. It begins with the student accessing the midterm assessment within their Tavera documentation. The student will then go through and complete a self-assessment. If the student has a site supervisor on site, the document will then be forwarded to the site supervisor for review and completion. If there is not a site supervisor, the document directly goes to the field instructor. If there is a site supervisor, the supervisor will complete their portion of the document and then once they've completed it, it will be forwarded to the field instructor. The field instructor will be the person that will make the ultimate determination of competency for the student within the placement. This will be based on supervision with the student, information that the student has completed in their self-assessment, information that the site supervisor has completed in the assessment, and the field instructor zone's observations and discussions with the student. Once the field instructor has completed their assessment, it will then be forwarded to the faculty field liaison or the instructor for final review. At the beginning of the assessment, there is a rating system that all parties will use in order to rate the student's level of competency. As you will see, the rating scale begins with one where the student is listed as no competency. Students do not demonstrate competency with this behavior. There is then two through five with five demonstrating competency and a beginning of autonomy with this behavior in complex situations. As you rate students on the midterm assessments and as the students complete their own self-assessment, we request for you all to be as transparent and honest as possible within this rating. Students are required to have an average of a 2.5 competency level on their midterm assessment. This is an average of all the overall competencies. You will see that a 2.5 competency falls between minimal and developing competency. This is where all students should fall. With that being said, the students have been told, and I am telling all the site supervisors and field instructors as I meet with them individually, but also at this time. There may be incidents in which a student will receive a one, and there may be incidents in which the student receives a five. It is for you to make that determination based on what you've experienced, seen, witnessed, observed, or been told by others on the student's competency levels. So again, Please be honest. The students have been told that having a one or a two is not a detriment to their grade at this point, but this is merely a point for them to achieve a higher rating when their final assessment is completed. This indicates an area that needs to have work and also that they need to focus on as they remain throughout their placement. On the student self-assessment. The very beginning part of the student self-assessment, the student will take those goals that carry over from their field learning plan, and they will complete a very easy rating on the activity is not completed, it is partially completed, is completed, or that they've had to complete an alternative activity. Now, with the alternative activity, what this means is, is that the student must do everything that is written in their field learning plan 
but they may also do things that are not written in their field learning plan. What we're really looking for in this area is if the student has a goal that they've had to switch it to a totally new goal that they're going to complete that alternative activity. The student will then provide a narrative explanation about their progress in completing the task and the goals. The student must describe how they engaged in the activity, the understanding of the level competency, and then if this was partially or not yet completed, the student should share how they expect to complete this competency by the end of their field placement. If the student has completed an alternative activity, we do ask that they share what that alternative activity was and how that alternative activity assisted them in obtaining a level of competence for the competency. That the student has completed their ratings for their individual task of either not completed, partially completed, or fully completed. They must then also use the same scale that we discussed at the beginning of this presentation to then rate their own level of understanding understanding with the competency for each individual practice behavior and competency. You will see that the student will then list as no competency, minimal competency, developing, emerging, or demonstrates competency. For the areas in which the students have rated themselves as a one or two, again, they must just make note and make sure that they have a plan to increase this competency for the second half of their placement. The student must mark a completion area for each one of their tasks of partially completed, not completed, fully completed, or alternatively completed. They must also give themselves a rating for each competency level. The students have been told that this document takes time. Once the students have rated all of their tasks and all their competencies, they do have a section at the bottom, which is an open narrative question area that allows them to identify strengths, weaknesses, and any other feedback that they wish to provide. Once the student has completely completed their part, the document will then automatically be sent to Tavera and alert either the site supervisor and or the field instructor to the next part that needs completed. I am now going to focus on what it looks like if you are a site supervisor. It is the student's responsibility to ensure the document is submitted to the site supervisor and or field instructor and plenty of time for the document to be thoroughly completed. It is also the student's responsibility to track the document through Tavera to ensure that the assessment process is moving and will be completed on time. At any time that the student sees a lapse in the document moving forward, they should reach out to either their site supervisor and their field instructor to identify barriers. If the field faculty liaison needs to be notified, it is appropriate to do so once the problem solving has been completed with a site supervisor and field instructor. On the part that will be completed by the site supervisor during the midterm assessment. The field office does understand that not all students may have a site supervisor. This information and section is relevant only to those students who have a site supervisor and a field instructor. Again, we are going to focus on just the site supervisor's part of the midterm assessment. The site supervisor is able to complete a reading for each competency listed within the student's document. You will see directly under the midterm student's competency rating, there is a section that says midterm supervisor. The midterm supervisor, if they believe have the ability to complete a rating on the student's level of competency, may select the rating from one to five within this area. We do understand that the site supervisor may not have had enough interaction or direct contact with the student pertaining to one or more of their competencies and may not feel comfortable inputting a competency rating. 
It is perfectly fine if you, as the site supervisor, do not feel that you have relevant information to complete a student's competency rating. If this is the case, simply leave that rating blank and move on to the next area, which you do feel comfortable in providing a rating. Also to note, as you will see, there is only one area for a midterm supervisor rating. This means as the site supervisor, your rating is simply information to the field instructor. The field instructor will review the student's self-assessment and any information provided in the document by the site supervisor. The field instructor may agree with a site supervisor's rating that they have provided. If they do not agree with this rating, the field instructor does have the ability to change the midterm supervisor rating either to a lower or higher rating. There is a narrative area in which the field instructor would explain if such a change was made. The supervisor has completed a competency rating for each of the areas that they're comfortable completed. You will see that those areas also have an area for the site supervisor to provide a narrative explanation as to why they did or did not provide a rating for that area. It does ask you to be supportive as possible, providing concrete examples and any concerns that you may have about the student's level of competencies in particular areas and or their areas of strengths that you may see in certain competencies as well. Supervisor has completed all of their competency ratings that they feel comfortable being completed. There is a narrative section at the end of the midterm assessment that we ask for all site supervisors to complete. This last section is a narrative section which identifies the student's strengths, areas that they need to work on and grow in, and any other additional information that the site supervisor wishes to share with either the student and or the field instructor and field faculty liaison. Once the site supervisor has completed all of their information, they're going to then sign and submit the document. The document will then be forwarded directly to the field instructor for completion of competency review. After obtains the document, they will see the student's self-assessment, the ratings of their task, and also their competency ratings. And then in some areas, they may see that there is a midterm evaluation of the competency that was provided by the site supervisor. It is at this point that the field instructor can either agree with the competency rating that was provided by the site supervisor, and if they are in agreement, just leave it as it is, and then complete the narrative section below that competency. If the field instructor does not agree with the competency rating that was provided by the site supervisor, they may then indicate a change by simply selecting a different rating other than the one that was provided by the site supervisor. The field instructor will then write within their narrative portion underneath the competency rating as to what the original rating was, what they changed it to, and then provide a rationale for that rating change. And what it will look like where the midterm field instructor will provide concrete examples and rationale to support the competency rating that they provided to the student during the completion of this midterm assessment. The instructor has rated all the students on their competencies. There is a last narrative portion at the end of the assessment that will ask for the field instructor to identify the areas of strengths for the student, the areas in which they believe the student needs to still grow and progress, and then also any other information and feedback that they wish to provide. The field instructor will then sign the document and submit it, which then means it will go to the field faculty liaison. The field and faculty liaisons highly recommend that this is a document that is also reviewed with the student during discussion. This document should be mimicking the process that a social worker 
may obtain during an employment performance review. It should allow them to have feedback, understand the feedback, question the feedback, and work on goals to help them either achieve a higher rating or to understand what progress needs to be made in order to obtain that higher rating. Fully submitted, the field faculty liaison or instructor for the course will review the assessment for overall completion. The field faculty liaison will then work with the field faculty director to complete an overall competency rating. This is completed by adding the competency rating of all nine competencies and dividing the total score by the supervisor's rating. The student needs to have an overall competency rating of 2.5 or higher for their midterm assessment. The field instructors and supervisors are not required to calculate this competency rating. This will be completed by the field um, office. We do request that all field instructors be mindful of this rating, but also be as honest as and as thorough in completing the midterm assessment. For this placement, there will be a final assessment that will need to be completed. The final assessment is very similar to the midterm assessment, but we do wish to alert you for a few things that will be different when you get to the point of completing the final assessment. Assessment from the midterm and the supervisor assessment from the midterm will carry over to the final assessment. This will allow the student to see where they were sitting at midterm, but also allow the field instructor to see how the student had rated themselves at midterm and then how the field instructor had also rated that student at midterm. So the, all the information that you need to complete the final assessment will be housed in one place, easily visible and accessible for you to make a final assessment and rating on the student's level of competency. As you will see, we'll have an area of self-assessment completed by the student and then a final supervisor's uh, section that will again be completed by either the site supervisor and or the field instructor with the field instructor again having the ability to agree with the site supervisor and or change that rating and also the ability for the site supervisor if there is one to opt out of that section. So very similar to the midterm assessment, but now we're just focusing on the final assessment and overall competency of the student at the completion of their placement. Multi-step process with the student completing the self-assessment, the site supervisor providing information if applicable, the field instructor, and then the faculty field liaison being involved at the end. Between the midterm assessment and the final assessment is that there is no longer an average rating for competency. At the final assessment, the student must have at least a three or higher on every rating from the field instructor and site supervisor to pass that competency. So this is really clear to understand of looking where the student was at midterm start to incorporate that in midterm at supervision and really start to work on um, providing feedback and being aware of where the competency rating may be at the final so there's no surprises for the student and or field instructor at the end of the assessment. So again, the big difference, no longer doing an average, but now each competency must be rated at a three or higher. The field faculty liaison in the final assessment is that there's no longer the average rating. So we are looking for completion. We are making sure that the student is at a three or higher. And if not, then we will be reaching out to determine what are the next steps to ensure that the student can successfully complete a, their placement and move forward as a social worker. Hopefully this process has been helpful for you to see and understand. As you walk through the process, if you have any questions, it is recommended that you reach out to the field faculty liaison for the student that you are working with. If, the, if that person is unavailable, our field director or any person from the field team is always willing to assist you in answering your questions and working to make the process for you and the students the easiest and most thorough as we want to ensure 
that we are sending the most competent social workers out into the field on their own post-graduation. We thank you for your time and helping to not only guide our students through this assessment process, but obtaining an understanding of your role within the student's assessment process.